Deloy Hansen, owner of Real Salt Lake and real estate icon here in the state of Utah. Thank you so much for being part of three questions today. Well, thank you, Bob. This was uh, a long drive to come this far west, but uh, we'll soon move you into downtown Salt Lake, so I'm not worried about that. That's super. <laughs> With Real Salt Lake, the Monarchs, and uh, the Academy, and now this new professional women's soccer team here coming into Utah, you're building a soccer empire here in Utah. Why soccer, of all the sports? Well, I wouldn't call it an empire. I would call it a state trust. That uh, I'm absolutely bought into the theory that if you're going to play soccer anywhere in the world, and in particular America, the very best place on earth to learn soccer, participate in soccer, and make that your lifestyle will be here in Utah. Something we get to own, and I'm absolutely committed to that. Why? Why here in Utah? Why is Utah? What makes Utah the best place to do what you are doing? One, we're smaller, so we can get our arms around a little better. Uh, two, we have a great soccer culture, in particular among women. In fact, I would argue that if you took it per capita, that we have the very highest soccer percentage among women in the entire nation. And uh, five, six division one women's teams, the very outstanding high school in the nation team, the best high school coach in the nation's here. Uh, it goes on and on. Utah has accolade after accolade. Three players from Alta High that have played on the national team. Utah's already a soccer hotbed. We're just trying to organize it better. Historically, professional soccer has lagged behind the other professional sports, football, baseball, yep. basketball, hockey, and those kinds of things. But not so much anymore. There are lots of people flocking yep. to the games, but the TV ratings uh -huh. are still lagging behind. How do you yep. fix that? Well, two things. One, of all the major American sports, soccer is growing in the right demographic, 18 to 49, faster than any other American sport. In fact, when I just returned from New York, we went through all of those with network executives and sports, advert, sports uh, networks, and soccer is by far the fastest growing, uh, even you know, Major League Soccer. Uh, when you take EPL, uh, La Liga in Spain, the Bundesliga, uh, it's overwhelming to look at 10 years, how much of the market share they've gained. So one, soccer is expanding, and the quality of the American game has to continue to expand for it to become relevant on the world stage. With so many influences, especially here in Utah, tugging on the recreational dollar, mm -hmm. how is it that you can watch soccer, professional soccer mm -hmm. in particular, grow so quickly in mm -hmm. its appeal? How is that happening? Why well, is it I happening? I think there's a couple of things. One is it's an easy sport. Uh, in England, cricket was the rich man's sport and soccer was the poor working class sport. Soccer's a ball and two friends and you're playing soccer. You know, most other sports require a lot of space, implementation, equipment, gear, ice. You know, it's got a lot of special effects. Show me a lawn, show me four kids and they can play soccer. You can play it on your foot on any field. So it's universal and it's universally uh, able for everyone to play. It is just everyone's game. Now, uh, I like tennis, but you need a court, you need a racket, you need some real skill to do that and not be chasing balls all over. We can all kick a ball. Soccer players just kick it a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> It took you 15 days from the first phone call to signing the contracts with the uh, Professional Women's Soccer League and uh -huh. the National Women's Soccer League. How, walk us through how you did that and why it only took 15 days. Well, the sad part is it really took five. That from the time we heard about the opportunity to the time we went to Portland, 10 days elapsed. Then we went to work on the 10th on the day we finished on the 15th. So from the time we engaged it, we thoroughly studied it, uh, what was there, really delved deep into it, flew to New York on a Sunday, <coughs> scheduled meetings with U.S. soccer and women's league soccer all day Monday. We brought our attorneys, we had their attorney, we said as we talk, we're writing the contract. So we literally negotiated and wrote the agreement as we went. <laughs> Why so fast? Why move so fast? We want to be in this year, uh, so we want to play in Utah in 2018. The league's committed to 10 teams, and there was a team struggling that needed deeper sponsorships is the best way to look at it. 
And uh, so an opportunity developed, instead of building right from the ground up, we could take over maybe part of this franchise and be in business this year, instead of two to three years from now, have to go through the laborious thing of starting from the ground up. It actually sped up everything and I think gave us a quality roster quicker. What were some of the challenges you faced in putting this thing together so quickly? One is my attorney likes to sleep. I had no concept why <laughs> how, Bob, dare he? how Bob Funk wanted some rest time, but he sat in his hotel room and he did work all but seven hours every day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I have a great attorney, Bob. We've worked together 25 years. I owe him a great deal because I don't think anybody would have worked as hard as he did for us and did a great job. Tell us the name of this team. This is exciting. <clears throat> We've been working on this for a long time. It had to be part of the RSL family, and yet it had to be unique and represent women in a very authoritative way. And so we came up with the Utah Royals FC. And so you've got the Real Salt Lake, you've got the Monarchs, uh, and now you've got the Utah Royals that represents our entire state. Wow. Is that fun? Yeah, that, that's an outstanding name. We're really glad that the, uh, the Kansas City Royals baseball team didn't object. <laughs> <laughs> did, did they of hear about you? You, you talked with them? Of course we did. Yeah. And, and what, what turned them, do you think? Well, we're not baseball. <laughs> and, and legally, they would have had a hard time. But we thought it was appropriate that, that we talked to them, and we did. What are your goals with the Salt Lake Royals FC? Well, one is the very best women's sport league, sports league in the world is the NWSL. It's not the EPL in England, it's not La Liga in Spain. The very best women's sport league in the world, that's important to understand, is the NWSL. We get a chance, and women make up more than 50% of the population of the world of 8 billion people. So being the very best sports league for 4 billion people seems important, doesn't it? Oh, sure. Okay, I, I think I'm getting the math right here. Yeah. <laughs> One of the challenges that the NWSL faces is the salaries that they are able yeah. to pay. How are you able, now in the news conference you mentioned those salaries will go anywhere from, what was it, 15000 to 45000 a year. Is that correct? Well, there's salaries greater than that that are undisclosed and it would be inappropriate to disclose those for the 20 members of the women's national team. Mm. So when you look at this, this is really the training ground for our women's national team. So you could kind of look at everything below the women's national team is like playing for the Monarchs. Mm. So if you look at the Monarch salaries and you look at the, the women's national salaries, they're pretty similar, except for the 20 that play for the nation. Now those salaries are undisclosed, but they're significant. And I think if you started to put that team against our Major League Soccer teams, I don't think we'd see a lot of difference. Help me to understand then how uh, those national women, do we have national players that are going yes. to be playing on yes. the Royals how, FC? How the game plays is U.S. Soccer, and Dan Flynn is the president. We met with him for 10 hours the first day Monday, the president of U.S. Soccer. So he's over all soccer and reports to FIFA. Uh, Men's, women's soccer is sponsored by U.S. soccer. Men's soccer, Major League Soccer, is sponsored by Major League Soccer. So you've got a very powerful component that has as their primary objective is to field the very best women's team in the world, and they run this. So the 20 team members that play on the national team are assigned to the 10 teams for training. So in essence, National Women's Soccer is to some degree a training academy or training group for the national team. Now the beauty for fans is when you come see 12 games, you saw every player that plays for the national team play in your stadium. And these are more well known than our, than our men's team substantially. Mm -hmm. They're known. Hope Solo, I could go on and on, I won't try to belabor it. But uh, they're known, well known. And so here in Utah, 20 players are going to show up that play in our stadium that our young girls and our college girls get to go watch the very best players in the entire world play here in Utah every year. Pretty cool. So who is going to be the coach of the Royals FC? 
Well, uh, when we did the research with Jill, who is head of the women's national team, uh, we spoke in Portland, we spoke with owners, we found one name came up, and her name's Laura Harvey. And she had worked for the Seattle Rain, but had recently quit. We'd heard that she terminated her contract and she was in Hawaii, you know, out of contract. And there were a number of people pursuing her. I think she wouldn't mind if I said the national team of England had put her in running for to coach the team of England. And uh, we had her fly into Seattle, fly down to Utah, stay at the Grand America Hotel, went with Trey and I to dinner, had a wonderful dinner. The next day, Mike Petke and Craig Weibel and Zarcos took her around for four hours to the training academy, showed her how the new locker rooms would be built. And by the time we put her on the airplane the next day, we had a contract. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we, we put a little effort into it. We think we have the very best coach in the league. And her only out in her contract, I don't think she'd mind saying, is if she gets called up to be the national coach, which would be the coach of the very best women's team in the world. Now, that's a pretty good recommendation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. She was amazing. She's got great soccer knowledge. She's passionate. Players love to play for her. She and Mike get along famously already. So I think I'm building a pretty cool family. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the public response to this new women's professional soccer team? It overwhelmed me. When we looked at the Google Analytics on our three uh, social media pages that we track in the first 24 hours, over 700,000 direct hits. During our press conference, 180,000 Facebook Live feeds were hit during that press conference. We've never had anything like that. We opened up interest for tickets. We're double what we expected. When we open up the actual season tickets, we think we'll become the third team in the league for record in the first three days. We'll fill the stadium. So if anybody wants to mark my words on one thing, on April 14th, that whole stadium will be covered in our colors. We're not going to announce that today. And uh, 20,000 helium balloons of that color will float in the atmosphere. Fireworks will go off. Smoke will be shown and we'll announce this most amazing team for the first time in Utah on April 14th. But I guarantee you that stadium will be packed. And there's that kind of interest. Uh, I wish everything I did had this kind of interest, but <laughs> it, it, we have little to no doubt. We just have to mobilize it, get it organized, to get the system working. But Utah will accept women's soccer. They'll participate, they'll love it, and they'll honor it that uh, we're empowering women. We're giving women an icon in this state. If you're a man, you got the Jazz, you got Utah football, you got BYU football, you got Real. Tell me what's the best sport iconic team that's in this state that women can rally around. You can go to University of Utah Gymnastics, you can do a lot of things, but this is a team that that defines you as an empowered woman. And these are women who are, they're not like men, they don't fall down and whine. They play <laughs> through everything. <laughs> they play through everything. <laughs> in the news conference, you talked about uh, the market research that you did on this, yeah. which was your gut feeling. What was it that told you that this would work? Well, one, you can easily, you could have a professional go out and tell you there's six uh, Division I soccer teams, and every one of these women is going to like this program. You can look and see there's more girls playing soccer in Utah than there are boys. Uh, it's the largest participation sport in the state of Utah, boys or girls. So we already have more participation at the high school level six Division I teams of women, and we've got one Division I men's. Uh, and there's an interest in the men's soccer. Second, you're going to put on the very best product in the world for women. I mean, you've got a great news organization, Lifetime TV, 100% in behind this, A&E. The broadcast will be amazing. The player involvement in the community will be amazing. I don't have any doubts. We just have to do it. And so when it happens and people say, well, how'd you know? I said, we just know. This is, this is one of those that I get to say is kind of a no-brainer. We just have to go do it. There is a difference between soccer fans, professional soccer fans, mm -hmm. and fans of other professional sports. I haven't been able to figure out what that difference is, but can you put your finger on it? I went to my first pro soccer match the year before I bought the team, and it was Chivas and Real. And I watched the game and I was marveling because I'd been to 
hundreds of tennis matches and we're very polite. And I've been to the jazz games, except for the 98 playoffs. They're great games, but that was special. <laughs> and, and I noticed that this was one that brings out the passion in people. Uh, and it's a place that you really release. Uh, you find a passion that you can express in a more open way. Uh, it's, there's not long gaps. Football, you play a play and you get four minutes. You, know, you play a play and you get one big hurrah. Yeah. Soccer's ongoing. It's got you moving all the time. It, it's got you on the edge. It doesn't have breaks. It's, it's always in motion. Uh, so I think the motion of the game and the passion with which you can pour into it uh, is just different. And that's what I'm attracted to is uh, I'm not a dispassionate owner. I've been fined. I've, I've, I've learned to keep my passion like Larry Miller did. You've got to kind of keep it in a little. Contain yourself. Uh, but just a uh, I, I think it, it's, it's one that you build a community around because we get a chance to express our passion as a joint community and in a common, common venue. You have been described as a businessman who ascribes to the idea of faster, better, and less expensive. Yeah. How do you keep from running the risk of sacrificing quality for speed when you move quickly, like you did with yeah. the... There, there's two things. Quality is always first. So you always pick what's the very best pinnacle quality. People laugh at me when they say, well, when I said, why didn't we do the best thing? They said, well, the budget. And I said, well, then why didn't we rewrite the budget? Because we always should do the best thing. Now, how do we execute it very quickly? so that we get efficiency that translates to cost and we are able to do other things. So once you've made a decision to do the very best thing, do it efficiently, quickly, with, a, with an eye towards efficiency. So, so cheaply is efficient. It's not that concrete gets cheaper. You just lay it more efficiently and, and it takes less labor. Mm. So, okay, now I don't spend as much for labor, but it's great concrete. We just did it more efficiently. So everything in my life is about efficiency, and people who work with me know we will be efficient. <laughs> You've got hundreds of employees out there. You also own Wasatch Property Management. Mm -hmm. You're, you've got your fingers in pies and business all over Utah. Mm -hmm. A great entrepreneur. How do you keep it all straight? I have ADD, <laughs> which means I can put it in a lot of files. <laughs> and, and that's true to a sense is that uh, when I open one file, it's very intense and I can move on it. When it shuts, I go to the other one and I'm there and I, I don't bridge a lot of there. So uh, <clears throat> Trey knows real well if he throws four ideas at me once and four files open up, it's just living hell. <laughs> so we try to keep one file at a time open. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sleeping five and a half hours. It does. Day. You got plenty of time. I never, I never feel short of time. I really don't. Of all of your business uh, dealings, the property management company and, and the other entrepreneurial things that you're doing, it seems like Real Salt Lake, the Monarchs, and now the Royals FC, uh, that's a passion for you. Yeah. It isn't just business. No, I, I have looked at it closely, and I'm turning 65. I have kind of calculate very methodically when I should end. And I want the next five years to be invested in one major goal, that when we're through with our operating program, Utah will clearly be the best place to train seven through 14 year olds. It'll be the best academy in the nation and one of the five best in the world. So our Real Academy at Harriman that trains 48 kids every year, 12 in each age group, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, when those kids come out, it will be harder to get into that academy than Harvard Law School by a long shot. Mm. It's that elite where we're going and where we are. Uh, I, I can give you a lot of statistics, but this year we're, what are we, Trey, eight and eight, nine and nine, nine oh. We're undefeated basically after the first game wow. on our 17s and 19s against everybody in America. We're that good. And uh, this academy will be that good. So after that academy, you can go to college Monarchs, Real, but uh, we'll build a top to bottom program that uh, we're raising our own players. You have a goal of quietly giving 30% of your income away to charities. You're not supposed to know that. Because if, if you know that, then I'm in trouble already. I, what I want to ask you is what role does charitable giving mm -hmm. play in successful business? Well, mine is, is when I was 28 years old, by then I'd built 800 homes. 
So I was a little kinetic in my early days, and I looked at the world and I knew I would have economic security. So earning money was never going to be a purpose for me. And I got deep into Greek civilization, and I basically bought into the idea that our real purpose is to build the very best civilization we can for our kids, our grandkids, and all that comes after us. And the Greeks did a great job of it. So I studied Marcus Aurelius, and I've looked at it, and I, I think my purpose waking up every day is to build a better civilization that's fairer, it's more equitable, it takes care of the least able, and uh, it challenges us to be the best ethical people we can be. And that wakes me up every day. It's, it's not about money. So giving 30%, it could be more, it could be less. But it's, it's always going to be significant because that's the purpose. It's not to, to just make more. I, I don't know what more means. If you drive a nice car, why do you need five nice cars? One nice car seems to work, doesn't it? So it takes now, you all the same places. Now, why don't we help somebody else? And so soccer is a place that we can devote. We have two full foundations, one for youth training, 7 to 14, and we expect to invest over 30 million in that over the next four years. We have the Salt Lake, the Real Salt Lake Foundation that's in the community, training youth referees, uh, building 60 uh, soccer courts at about 50,000 a pop. We've got 11 done, we've got another 49 to do, and we're on our path to do it, and our partners help us. Uh, we can leave a better community. Uh, I have 35 grandkids. They will have a better world than I had. And I absolutely believe that. I do not think, I'm not one of these spiritual, the world is coming to an end types at all. I think they're kind of lost out in space. Uh, the world's getting better. It's getting kinder. It's getting more inclusive. It's getting a better atmosphere. You know, we won't put carbon into our atmosphere. I built 13 megawatts of solar in the last two years. Mm. I think we can completely leave fossil fuels in 20 years. I mean, I really believe the world can be better, not worse, better. And uh, we're committed to that. Depending on which figures you look at, MLS is operating in the red mm -hmm. and continues to do so. And yet it is expanding. Where does RSL sit? Are you able to make a profit with RSL? Well, I don't ever look at it as a profit, is it will create a surplus that we can reinvest into the club. Uh, the Millers left a great example in this community. Larry Miller and his wife, Gail, built an amazing franchise around the Jazz that we're all proud. I mean, I use the Jazz as one of the coolest things that Utah's done. And when it came time to say, can we take the money out and have this mega wealth for ourselves, what did they do? They gave it to the community. We haven't given them near enough accolade for what they did. They built this amazing community rallying point that gives us a lot of pride, and they gave it to the community. Amazing people. At the end, like I tell people, you don't own a soccer franchise. It's owned by the fans. It's owned by the players. You just get to guide it for a little while. And I want to guide it well, but it'll never be mine. That's, that's ludicrous to think. Uh, it belongs to the employees, it belongs to the fans, it belongs to the team. And luckily, the Irish, I get to guide it for a little while. But somebody else will guide it in the future and it'll become part of the community. And that's, that's what this is all about. You are no stranger to making things happen <laughs> wherever you go and all around you. What is next? What is on deck <laughs> for Deloy Hansen? What big, big project is coming up on the horizon. The one that I'm really focused on right today, mm -hmm. I'm buying half of a coin company in Virginia. Because <laughs> I like coins, so <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, this will help me do it better. And uh, he's a great partner, and so I'm looking forward to that. So is that crazy? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't. If you're involved in it, I'm sure it's going to be like very a lot of fun. successful. Sounds like a lot of fun. Well, that is wonderful. Well, Deloy Hansen, owner of Real Salt Lake, real Thank estate you. icon here in Utah. Thank Appreciate you so it. much for being part of Three Questions. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.